Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and today I'm very, very stoked, I guess is the word I always like to use, to be uh, spending some time in a week with uh, the brand new 2024 VinFast VF8. Uh, this is the uh, plus version of that VF8 SUV. It's the first all-electric offering from VinFast here in Canada and in the US and in North America. And I'm extremely happy to be able to bring this to you. In fact, I'm the first Canadian journalist to get one of their very first press vehicles, the first press vehicle. They asked me about a week ago, saying that they had just got them. We were waiting for them to actually build out a press fleet for about a year or so now, but they've been focusing on customer deliveries, getting those early reservation holders, uh, getting products into their hands. So, you know, they finally have a couple of vehicles now that they can let us uh, press uh, use, and this is the first one right now that's available and they've asked me, so I'm extremely honored to have been asked and I wanna thank VinFast Canada, of course, for uh, bringing me into this and allowing me to spend about a week with this vehicle. Um, if you go back and look at some previous episodes, I've done you know some short kind of jaunts on the VF8. Um, they did a launch about a year and a half ago where I only spent maybe about 10 minutes with the vehicle in a parking lot in a kind of a coned area and I you know went through the menu system and, and as much detail as I could at that time but really have not had a road test. Now I've been able to spend about four days so far with this vehicle and you know I'll provide range and all that efficiency and all that numbers at the end um, that I'll add in you know when I get to a couple more days of driving still. But I can tell you that the vehicle has been performing exceptionally well. Um, you know, I was a little unsure about the VF8. Um, I know that, you know, they're new, they're uh, all this kind of stuff. People are a little worried about VinFast, but, you know, after spending several days with this vehicle, continuing to drive it as I do normal, we've had this tremendous heat wave here in Southern Ontario, where we've had 35 to 38 degrees Celsius temperatures with Humidex ranging into the 40s. So I've been running the air conditioning on this a lot. And, you know, obviously that's gonna impact the range and efficiency numbers, but it's still doing pretty good, even with running the AC almost full time over the last four days, every time we're driving it. So again, I wanna thank VinFast and let me get right into explaining all about the company, about the vehicle, and letting you know my thoughts. Now, when we're looking at the design of the VinFast V8, uh, one thing that I do like about it is, and I guess they really are promoting this, is that it looks like a lot of the other midsize uh, SUVs that are out in the market today. It doesn't really scream that it's an all electric offering, and they've done that on purpose. Now, the VF8 is based on their internal combustion version of the VF8 that VinFast started production with a couple of years ago, maybe three or four years ago now. And uh, at about two years ago or so, VinFast decided to go all electric. So they stopped production of the internal combustion vehicle version of the VF8 or a similar uh, SUV that they were producing at the time. In fact, this is actually based on a BMW X3 chassis. So they have about 10 to 15 years, let's say 10 to 12 years of auto manufacturing experience as a company. Um, they've invested a lot of money in their plant in Vietnam, which is where today all these vehicles are assembled, are produced and assembled. And it's a very state-of-the-art uh, manufacturing plant with a lot of automation and a lot of really conscious workers that are building high-quality products because, again, they were already building um, you know, their own brand products and products for other organizations for the last dozen or so years uh, and to a very good and high-quality standard. So they maintain that production and that, that emphasis on quality uh, without, throughout their manufacturing process. They've invested a lot of money in building a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility to get a really good product out the door. And I can honestly say that after the you know four or five days so far of driving this, there's no squeaks and rattles. Everything works as it should. You know, the, the power windows, the locks, I mean, anything that has a motor, a hinge, anything that has a part to it that's going to move, works and it works very very well i haven't had any issues where i will talk a little bit about is on the software side because that's where they've, they've been ramping up to get a, a always increase and better the software and i'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later on but you know taking that design standpoint from a pininfarina is where they got the styling from so you know it looks like a regular suv in the marketplace but it's nice it's distinct it's comfortable it's welcoming it's not over the top um, they have their signature, of course, um, uh, lighting with LED, both in the front and the rear. 
to tell you that it's a VinFast product if you don't recognize the big V on both, uh, both front and rear. Um, but it's a very nice, solid five-passenger mid-size SUV design and build. It's got a good weight to it. In fact, it's heavy, of course, because it's all battery. There's no ICE version anymore that they build. As I mentioned, everything is all electric now. And so you've got that low center of gravity. You've got that nice weight that plants you down. So you feel the heaviness, but it rides really nice. And I'll talk about the riding and stuff in my driving um, uh, piece coming up. So overall, I like the design. It's turned a few heads. They've got some really nice uh, colors. It's not over the top. It blends with the sea of SUVs that we have here in North America, at least. Park it in a Costco and you'll be strained to go find it. I was next to an X3. I've been next to some Audi uh, midsize uh, Q products. Um, I've been next to all kinds of different SUVs and this just blends right in. You know, it's a very good size for passengers and some stuff. So well done on the design element and the overall a statement that VinFast is trying to make in this marketplace. Now from a specification perspective, um, this has ample power and get up and go. Now they've sent me in this particular version, as I mentioned, the plus version, but it has the 300 kilowatt power upgrade as well. So that's an additional cost. Um, and this particular version uh, produces 402 horsepower. They only come in all wheel drive. So both, whether you get the eco version or the plus versions, they only come in dual motor all wheel drive variants. Uh, so again, for Canadians and North Americans that want all wheel drive all the time, that's all these things come with. So you're gonna get that, those features. Um, from Torque, these have a lot of get up and go and specifically this power version or this 300 kilowatt version uh, on the plus uh, has uh, that boost to give you 457 pound feet of torque. Trust me folks, that's plenty get up and go for this kind of vehicle. Now this is all powered from a battery pack that has an 87.7 usable uh, kilowatt hour usable capacity. Uh, and that gives you EPA rated ranges of up to about 425 kilometers on the eco version um, and about 391 on this 300 kilowatt plus version or 354 if you go on the plus with the 260 kilowatt motors. Again, I'll let you know what I'm seeing, but again, the numbers today are gonna to be skewed because normally I wouldn't have the air conditioning running all the time. And you know, right now I'm, I'm filming early in the morning because the heat's coming on. And if I get to 10 or 11, it's going to be 38 degrees with some humidity, humid, uh, humidity today. So it's been that kind of weather, almost a little jungle weather up here in Southern Ontario. I'm fully confident that based on how I was tracking earlier in the week that I could have got uh, well over 400 kilometers in this vehicle, probably over 450 kilometers is the way I was tracking on this particular vehicle. So eco driving, just normally I'm using. Now charging is done here in the front port. I like it when they put them closer to the front. A lot of people like to pull into charging spots versus reverse in. Uh, open that up and you have your standard CCS combo port. There is no NACS port yet in this. Um, you got your standard uh, configurations. And for AC level two, uh, one and two charging, the max is 11 kilowatts, so more than capable for overnight charging on this bigger battery. And for DC fast charging, I was told that the maximum rate is 150 kilowatts, which is the norm in the industry for most vehicles. Let's see how it is uh, to get into the back seat before I show you uh, all the interior. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty nice wide the door opening. Doesn't open all the way 90 degrees, but it's fairly close, but nice and easy. Easy step over here down not much not much effort or struggle to get into here um, i've got the seat where i have it and i'm about five seven so i see lots of room um, apparently one of the people i talked to at vinfast is about six one he said he was able to put the seat in his position and get in the back seat and still have leg room both uh headroom and leg room in here so it's a nice interior even with this panoramic sunroof which takes off obviously a little bit of headroom it's still pretty pretty adequate especially for guys like me now, these seats do have a tilt feature, as soon as I could find the handle. So uh, it has several degrees of tilt, so you can lay back probably about 10 or 15 degrees. So it's nice if you want to nap and you're, uh, you're in the vehicle here. Um, I like it more upright, so I'll put it there. Um, but very nice, uh, comfortable. The materials here are optional upgrades. Um, as I'm talking, I'm showing you the rear seat as well. You've got your vents here. Pretty basic setup, your rear vents for your HVAC. You've got a couple of uh, USB You've got some door pockets. So. Very comfortable seat. Again, room for four, easy enough. It's got a nice fold down armrest. Um, armrest doesn't have coffee cup holders built into it. It has a la BMW and, uh, and Mercedes where it, it actually pops out of the middle of the uh, armrest. 
Uh, but a very comfortable interior. There's not really much more to tell you. A nice panoramic sunroof if you want that. You've got your uh, reading lights nice and easy. Grab handles all the way. Each door has a grab handle, including the front driver, which is a nice. A lot of vehicles don't put a grab handle there. So that's uh, nice to see that they've thought of everything. When we look at cargo capacity, we'll start with the front. It does have one with a capacity of 76 liters or 2.7 cubic feet. As you can see here, it's got some nice little cubbies and cutouts for different things. Again, you can't put a ton of stuff in here, but certainly put a small bag, a couple of bags, knapsacks, washer fluid if you want, that kind of stuff. Works pretty good. And we'll look at cargo space on the rear. It's got a power lift gate. And uh, behind the second row seats, you've got uh, 374 liters or about 13.2 uh, cubic feet of storage space. So decent size to put some stuff in. Then of course, if you put the first row down, it does increase your space to 1,370 liters or 48.4 cubic feet, which is a pretty good amount of room to put stuff. You can actually sleep in that if you want to. And looking what's underneath, of the uh, sub uh, trunk, if you want to call it. There's really not much. Again, the uh, ICE vehicle routes come to show because there's room for a spare, Econo spare, and some other stuff there, which they just leave in. So again, looking at the front, it's a nice interior, nice quality use of materials here. It's a lot of soft touch. Some of the features of the front include, included the heated leather steering wheel, uh, which is from BMW, and some of the components there. You have a nice um, leatherette on the seats here. This has an optional package. You've got three uh, driving modes, your Eco, Normal, and Sport. He also has a driver monitoring system to keep, make sure that you're paying attention. 15.6 high definition touchscreen, which I'm going to get into a little bit more detail. You've even got an upholstered dashboard. Um, available Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and wireless smartphone charging pad are all included in this. Uh, nice ergonomics, as I mentioned, with a coffee cup holder, things like that. You know, small things, but uh, they're pretty important when you're out driving around, you know, to have these kind of things. Keyless start stop, so there is no button in vehicle navigation. It's got automatic two tone, two zone, excuse me, climate controls with air ionization. This one has power seats uh, with heating and ventilation, as I mentioned in the plus version. Ambient lighting around this nice leather at upholstery again, and available rear seats with heated and ventilation as well, which is something you don't find on a lot of vehicles. Nice power sunroof in this package with a shade. Everything comes together very nicely in a nice high quality package, no squeaks rattles. All right, I want to spend a few minutes just walking through the display because I think um, if you look at my previous video, I went through a lot of the menu options and um, this I'm going to do a little bit again, just kind of going through and showing you where they've come from a, a software perspective. So, I mean, obviously this is very Tesla-like interior, right? It's got the one main display. There's no driver binnacle here. Everything is software controlled. There are a few hardware buttons, but not very many, may, may, mainly gear selector, windows, that kind of stuff, stuff on the steering wheel for ADAS and all your safety stuff. Um, so everything is very Tesla-like from a software. So that's extremely important. And they come a long way. So they have your main screen, which gives you your vehicle functions, a, a small map and some apps, most common ones here. And then you can uh, get into bigger views. If we look at some of the features like battery here, percent, um, uh, we click that button and here it shows, you know, where I'm at, what the expected range is, the temperature of the battery, all that kind of stuff. Um, what we're doing here. So, um, and the status of the vehicle. And then there, of course, there are settings that you can do for charging and all kinds of stuff and what, what you display, if it's percentage or um, and the regen stuff and percentage or kilometer range. I just like having percentage uh, from my standpoint. So different things that you can do, reminders, all that kind of stuff. So very thought out. Um, range uh, on the trip here that I'm doing as you can see so far I've done 240 kilometers and I'm at 19.6 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 which is good I think under 20 is good for a vehicle like this and again that's mainly due to the fact that I've been running AC almost all the time pretty well because it's been that hot I'm not running right now and I'm sweating and it's uh, not even 11 in the morning and it's warm uh, here you have some of your quick controls on this side. So you have your lights, of course, you want to change your light controls, um, put them on, you have your side mirrors. And just like Tesla, for your mirrors and your steering wheel, you use the buttons here to uh, to change, uh, move the mirrors around. You can fold the mirrors, there's auto fold uh, when locked, tilt on reverse, all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's, there's this kind of uh, things here for the quick controls. Again, your steering wheel, same thing. Just use that button and you can put your steering wheel uh, heater on as well. It comes with it um, through this interface. This is where you would deal with the HUD, the HUD. So it does not have a driver's binnacle, but it has a HUD. 
and I'm not sure if that's coming through uh, in the video here. There it is. So it shows up of the HUD. I turned it on and I moved it down to the low part of the screen. It shows you some essentials, including if you're in lane keeping or uh, auto um, uh, adaptive cruise control, it will show you those and let you know it's green and all that kind of stuff as we see in other vehicles. So you have a HUD there if you want it. I'm not, I don't really care for HUDs, but um, it's there. And here is where you can turn it on or off and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to turn it back off because I don't need it and go from there. And then this is your shade. And that's a really nice function, actually. I just closed it, but this is where you control your venting. So you can open and then it has a full down shade. And if I, you can see here, uh, that I've got it just slightly open the shade. Um, but if I want to close, if I want to just do it halfway, I just slide that halfway and then it shows a visual of it. And then it shows, um, it actually is doing the, the sliding as you can see. So if I want to go all the way back and go all the way back, just slide it down a little bit more and off it goes. Um, if I want to open the glass, there's this vent button for the sunroof. So just press that and she pops open. And if you want to open it more, you just slide this down. And if you want to fully open it, then it opens and uh, everything pops up there. So you can get the full effect of, uh, of that. I'm just going to go back to vent mode because it looks like it might start raining soon. Um, and I'm going to uh, just close that for a sec because the shade is offering some more sun, some more light here on this glass and I'm trying to keep it clean for you. So I like having the sunroof controls here. Then you can unlock charge port door here and open the hatch uh, through these buttons, very similar to Tesla. And you can see there's visualizations on that roof. Um, so those are some of your side controls. And then these are some additional quick controls, uh, excuse me, where you have the vehicle comes up and you have some quick controls here um, for that kind of stuff, like turning on wireless charging or the park assist chime or like Joe mode, reducing the chime uh, as well and changing the brightness and enabling um, uh, electronic stability. Here's where you switch your drive modes, uh, very straightforward. You have your driving styles. I've been leaving a normal because it's more than enough adequate. The creep is on or off. And as I mentioned, even in off, there is some movement. There is not an auto hold feature. So you need to be uh, impactful of that. I believe VinFast is working on a software update that'll support that, but they're not there yet. So that'll be coming. And then your different regenerative braking, um, as I mentioned as well on here driving style and then you have your video cam your camera so it's got a 360 camera as well so you can you can uh, you know as it sparses all those cameras together and gives you nice vis visualization vi visuals i can't speak today it's the heat folks um you got a front facing you've got your sides if you're going to do some side parking and then your rear of course and then if you're trailing it gives you kind of a lineup for where a trailer hitch would be so some nice features and i think you can uh, blow these up yeah to full screen if you just tap on them so Nice features and decent cameras. They're okay. They're not the greatest, but they're not the worst either. So pretty good job there. Uh, this is for your seat and uh, these are controls all the seats. So again, you can put your steering wheel heater on. You can heat your seats from here, heater cool. And this is where, this is the front and uh, driver, front passenger, and then the rear passenger and the rear driver. And you can cool them or heat them. You just slide this uh, knob over and uh, mine turns the blue and then the fan fires up and uh, starts cooling off. So in fact, I'm going to leave that on to one because I'm burning here. It's really, really warm. So again, another really easy feature to find. And then these are your HVAC controls uh, I, I, as well. AC, if you want your filtration on or off, you can sync it as well. Um, all that kind of stuff. Your fan controls are here. Oh, really easy. It tells you the flows. You can want to change your flows. Um, very easy to do and all that kind of good stuff. So um, the, everything is really easy to find and function. And then you've got the reverse on that side for the passenger side. You've got your dash uh, max uh, for venting, for heating the, or cooling the, the window front screen, like for the winter, you want to de-ice and then your rear window. And then this is a button for your app. So you've got a whole bunch of apps here and I'm sure more that you can probably get access to. Um, the main ones here that I've been using are the drive aids and the EV function. EV again, it just takes me back to that. But if I um, uh, do the drive aids, this is where I have a lot of the driving assistance or the ADAS features. I can turn them on or off depending on what they are. Traffic sign recognition, speed limit warnings, um, intelligent speed adaption based on different uh, things. Your lane keep assist. Um, I've been typically turning that off um, because I don't really like them when I'm city driving. And um, uh, it, this one with the emergency lane keeping is very aggressive. It'll actually pull. You got to grip the wheel if it comes on. So highway assist to different uh, settings here and then your camera settings as well on the display. When you, um, let's say you're below 15 and you want to turn, put your turn signal on, it'll bring up a camera. 
um, and it's that when you're moving. So um, kind of like what Tesla has done and the South Koreans with their side uh, the camera when you put your turn signal on so you can have that. You've got your collision avoidance stuff, sensitivity, all that kind of stuff on and then some parking as well. Rear cross traffic alert which works really well. I'll show you that coming up in my driving stuff. I'll talk about that. So those are kind of the main features of this screen. Uh, you can set things like your clock if you want. You go into settings, all kinds of stuff there. Uh, but it's a really nice, uh, concise thing. The only drawback that I would say right now is that a lot of the settings that you make, um, when the car sits for more than an hour or so and kind of goes into sleep, it will it'll revert those settings back to a default. And I'd like um, all the settings, every single setting that I do to be retained. That's just me. And not many vehicles do that, but some most have tried to, to do most of the settings. So that's my only feedback to VinFast from a software is I'd like all the settings, including some of those safety defaults, um, like lane keeping turned off and things like that, that when I set them off, I'd like it to stay. So those get turned back on. But things like drive modes, um, mirrors, um, a steering wheel, seat settings, they all are retained based on your profile. And here's where you can set up profiles. They created a, a profile for me so that I could save stuff too. And I have access to the vehicle through the app, which is pretty good actually. Um, it's a really good app. And then here's the nav screen where you can uh, punch in a destination. Let's say I'm looking for food or drinks or whatever around here and it will come up. Uh, so it's got a pretty nice interface for the nav. You can do some settings here. It um, has some downloaded maps already that are on here. And um, the only drawback to the maps that I've known, which uh, I'll make known to VinFast, is that you can't type in uh, 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 an address while you're driving. And I know some manufacturers do that. Most don't. Most allow you to still type. Um, and I even tried the Audible and it didn't work. So that could be a slight bug as well. And I hope that they um, they do that because that's a bit of a pain if you're figuring out where you want to go and then you, you're you driving and it won't let you input it in. So you gotta you have to stop basically. And that's, that's not the greatest thing. Um, it does support wireless uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I've got the wireless uh, going on my phone. Um, so it, uh, it connects and I've been playing music and I've been using some of the supported apps on that. So that works good. Lots of different settings here as well in seats, easy entry and doors, all that kind of stuff. So all your standard settings are here. So a nice layout, really easy to kind of figure out and navigate. Again, my only, uh, my only feedback on the software is that they need to, um, just retain all the settings and I'm sure over time they'll get there. Um, but I'm told that this has a lot of software fixes on it that um, uh, some of the owners were experiencing some minor problems uh, and this has a lot of the fixes on it. So um, they've done a good job. All right, just wanted to give you my driving thoughts. I had actually recorded a segment, but the audio, there was a problem with the audio. So I'm just gonna do this again. Um, you know, it's been a really pleasant week driving with the VF8. Everything has worked. Everything has worked fine. I've had no issues in managing and driving this car day to day. I went on the highway, I've done all kinds of stuff. I run errands, run to work, carry people around, and this thing just goes. And it's been a really pleasant experience. Um, so, you know, from a driving perspective, I like the ergonomics. I said it when I talked about the interior. It's a really nice, comfortable interior. Lots of soft touch everywhere. So, you know, they've done a good job there in, in giving owners a little bit nicer experience. Um, in, in a more luxurious SUV manner. Good viewpoints uh, from the windows. You said hi, so you have a, a good view. Of the um, so on the driving part, uh, the steering is easy. Um, it's power controlled and maneuvers quite easily. It might be a tad light in some cases, but hey, again, this isn't a racing car. This is to haul people and stuff around and it does that very adequately. I've gone to malls, parked it, I've had no issues. So the steering is fine, it responds uh, very well. Um, the suspension I think is really good. A friend of mine has an X3 and he said that this suspension, because I took him for a ride, this suspension is better than on his X3. Um, so it's a little bit softer than the X3, but still sporty enough. And these are sporting 20 inch wheels on this one um, to be comfortable. Um, and I think it is, I, you know, it's not going to be like you're floating, but you, it definitely takes the, the bumps, absorbs them quite well, keeps everything fairly stable and uh, doesn't knock stuff around too much. So I think they've done a good job with the suspension and, and the control aspects of this vehicle. Um, what else? The braking. Um, you know, it can feel a little soft, but again, I've had no problem stopping. I've had to actually stop quickly a couple of times based on traffic uh, changes and this thing just reacts. It's uh, been no problem at all. 
Um, it's quiet. Uh, again, I'm running, uh, I'm driving around and uh, I'm recording without the use of an external mic on this particular one and hopefully you can hear me fine. You can, you can hear that there's really not a lot of, of car noise. The motors are relatively quiet, uh, being an all-wheel drive, so both a front and a rear motor. Um, I've even got the fan on a little bit just to let some air in here. I've had some passengers. They've said that the driving experience was nice and comfortable um, and uh, very pleasing to sit in. Uh, the cooling seats have been a great help for this week, especially since we have the, uh, the really hot, humid weather. So, you know, from a drivability and usability perspective, they've done a great job in this product. I'm very, very impressed. I've been able to give this um, uh, over 400 kilometers, probably about 500 kilometers when I'm finished driving it and um, <clears throat> very happy with it, um, very happy with it. So, um, you know, good job on VinFast. So they've really packed, again, a lot of value into this product. And if there's anything that I want, I'm hoping that you can take away is that this is a competent uh, vehicle and with a lot of value. And, you know, $60,000 is a lot of money. I get it, folks. You know, there's the days of $25,000 vehicles are gone. But, you know, when you compare this to others that are out there and the amount of value that you get, it holds its own. It's pretty good. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that comparison. But anyway, drivability, um, it's been really good, easy to drive around and uh, very comfortable and quiet. So good job. All right, so setting up a navigation to a charger, I'm going to go to the IV charging in Meadowvale. It tells me how far away, what my estimated battery is when I get there. Uh, and the power consumption. So again, it doesn't have the same integration as Tesla does showing you uh, how many stations are in use. You'd have to go to the actual IV app to check that, but it gives you some good information on uh, what you're looking for and some fees and what's what's in the system basically and who runs it. So uh, it's a good job. I'm gonna do the navigate and then we'll do a fast charge. All right, using the app to start to charge. Took, only took about 10 seconds or so to get it going. And uh, so I'm starting at 11% here on the VinFast VF8, apologize for all the noise. It's a busy active shopping mall. Uh, starting to deliver, as you can see, up to um, 70, 80 kilowatts. This is a 100 kilowatt station, so I think that's probably where it's gonna max out. Okay, it's gonna give me a little bit more. Then this could be a 150, and uh, we'll see. And you can see on the screen, it shows it's receiving 132 kilowatts. This is for a 100% charge. I'm not gonna to go to 100, I'm only gonna to go to about 70 or 75, just to, to see how long it takes for that 10 to 70 um, in this uh, charging environment. At least the display is nice and clear and gives you good info. All right, so I've been charging for about, um, let's see, 18 minutes. We're at 52, 53% state of charge, started at 11%. So it's about right. It looks like it's gonna be on track to do its 10 to 70% in about 30, 31 minutes is what VinFast claims here. And it seems to be that we're on track for that because that's the number I'm going to aim for is 70% uh, and see how long that takes. And I'll, uh, of course, I'm capturing all the numbers. So I'm going to grab this out for everybody so that we can see uh, see how it looks. But uh, again, pretty easy. All right, so I hit my 70%. I actually did it in 29 minutes and that was from 11% to 70. So 29 minutes. VinFast stated is uh, 31 minutes from 10% to 70. So I'm maybe a minute or so less than that. I think I did all right. So what their claim stands. So on average, then, if you relate this and, and again, I'll throw a charging curve up after this and talk a little bit about it. But the experience that I see is if you're road tripping in the nice weather, you're going to get, you know, 300 and something kilometers of range easy on the highway. Um, let's say drive for three hours, stop for about 30 minutes, maybe to 40 minutes, because I'm going to probably go to 80 percent on this just to see. So let's say stopping to 40 minutes and then repeating again, driving another three hours, three hours and change, depending on the cir circumstances and then stopping again. So I think that that's a really good uh, average as far as road tripping goes. Again, some some uh, vendors do these things faster, so your, your, uh, your stops will be a little less, but I think that that's a good trade off, especially when you look at uh, the potential cost savings on uh, fast charging versus gas. I know fast charging is getting more expensive, but it's still, at uh, less than gas, uh, if not at par, at the worst case, it's par, but in most cases, it's still less than you would pay for fuel to do that same mileage. So, uh, good test of the charging system. Well done, VinFast. I uh, like to see when it's nice and steady and uh, your, your numbers are right on. Just to explain the charging profile here, as you can see the numbers on the left, which show the time and the state of charge as it moved through the charging cycle. 
Uh, and then I graph that so you can kind of see what the, in the red what the charging curve looks like. That's a pretty decent curve. It's fairly balanced. So it starts relatively high uh, on the scale of what that vehicle is capable of and then kind of peaks and valleys, but it slowly makes its way down to still a pretty respectable pull when it gets to 80%. And again, it matches within that window. And then I give you all the specs at the bottom of how much power I pulled in this charge and, all, and the temperature of the battery being at 40C. I have to admit the cooling system was pretty quiet in that vehicle as it was running. I didn't hear like usually we hear fans going and stuff like that. So the um, the HMU that uh, is used, the system that's used by VinFast is actually pretty efficient in maintaining the battery temperature and, and uh, keeping everything cool and safe for that uh, fast charge. So again, they've done a good job. That seems like a pretty reasonable curve to me. But, you know, you make your decisions based on that. I just wanted to give you all the info. Just a few other things I wanted to mention. The VinFast products come with, with a full suite of adaptive uh, safety features or advanced driver assistance systems or ADAS. So everything from you know a highway assist to lane departure warning and keeping, centering, adaptive cruise control, uh, forward collision warning, and rear cross traffic alert and more, parking assist, things like that. So it's pretty loaded when it comes to the ADAS systems. And I know VinFast is very proud of, of offering this product with all those systems, regarding of which trim level you, you pick. So that's one uh, thing. Uh, they both score uh, five stars on the uh, NHTSA uh, crash ratings, which again are typical with all electric vehicles that they score very high. And um, uh, lots of front, uh, lots of airbags, I think 11 airbags for uh, the system all over the place, uh, side, front, uh, uh, curtain, uh, seat, all that kind of stuff. So it's a very safe vehicle and safety is very important to all manufacturers these days, not just VinFast. And also wanted to mention about the warranty. VinFast is offering the best warranty in the business when it comes to electrified vehicles. Um, they are so confident in, in supporting their vehicles that they have a 10 year, 200,000 kilometer warranty for a comprehensive vehicle bumper to bumper and then a 10 year unlimited mileage for the battery and drivetrain system. That's unheard of in the industry to have that unlimited. Most are eight year 160,000 kilometers or eight year 100 miles. And within that 10 year, you get um, OTA, you get mobile support services. Uh, of course, uh, VinFast continues to open their service centers and 24 by seven roadside assistance. So they really wanna stand behind their product. Well, I hope you enjoyed the look on this vehicle. And when we look at pricing, you know, I think what I was, what I'm trying to portray on this review is really the overall value that VinFast brings to the table. Because at first, I was a little concerned about their price point, a little higher than I thought it might be for a company that's newer to the North American marketplace. So you would expect it to be, you know, a price competitive. Looking at it from that point, and I believe this vehicle still is in the class that it is. I'm going to put a chart up that compares kind of the pricing. Uh, of this vehicle with some of the other competitors that they even list, uh, VinFast even lists here. So you can see that it's priced pretty aggressively and fairly um, uh, within the market that it, it plays in compared to the um, competition that's out there. And I think they've done a good job because the Eco version starts at 53,600 at Canadian MSRP. This version um, you know, adds uh, with all the options, bumps it to about 60K, but with the federal incentive and some other provincial incentives that VinFast is offering, this is before taxes, when you factor in your freight, PDI, all that stuff, it's under $60,000 before tax. With everything, this is a loaded vehicle, top spec vehicle, power everything. I think it's a really good value, and I think it's something that if you're in the market for a mid sized five passenger SUV, you should look at this. I think it, it, you take it for a spin, see how it is ergonomically. They've come a long way with the software and they continue to improve the vehicle on a day by day supported by OTA updates. So again, well done VinFast on this vehicle. Absolutely recommended. It. it definitely is something that people should look at if they're in the market for this kind of vehicle. Good job.